Well, hello, everyone, and happy Nowruz. I just want to start by wishing a very happy Nowruz to my Persian friends, Persian-American friends, the Organization of Iranian-American Communities. Uh, I want to wish a happy Nowruz to our exiled Iranian friends in France, all over Europe, Australia, and in Albania in particular. It was great to see Ambassador Faber here. Uh, we salute the Albanian government. I had the privilege of vi visiting Albania for the first time last fall and meeting with the, the Iranian exiles who are out of Camp Liberty at last, safely. So there's a lot to celebrate. I'm not going to disappoint you. As a policy practitioner of long standing, I'm going to, I'm going to give you some some things we can do. You heard Senator McCain talk about sanctions, and you heard the other speakers speak about uh, military responses, but there's more than that, and I will get to a list. A year ago, of course, we were worried about the 3,000-plus defenseless men and women bravely standing against religious fundamentalism at, at Camp Liberty, and we had followed their quest ever since 1986 when they first established their presence in Iraq and built Camp Ashraf which is a, a real monument to ingenuity and hard work. A year ago, we still heard frequently uh, disparaging comments about the Iranian resistance. Let's be honest. Uh, they were on the terrorism list from 1997 to 2012. And many d credentialed people in Washington and media people were afraid to say that maybe the allegations of terrorism were a little bit suspect. And to me, that was unacceptable and dangerous. So I investigated the allegations and tried to learn the story of this resistance that has been going on for over 50 years now. And finally, a year ago, our analysts in Washington said, pay attention to the reformers. Some, some said moderates, that Rouhani and Foreign Minister Zarif and Rafsanjani, their, 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 their major leader, the reform group in Iran was the horse that we would bet on to change and improve Iran. That was a year ago. Look what's changed a year later. So many things have changed. The JCPOA has not been torn up. It's being rigorously monitored and enforced, and there have been some violations. We've not gone to war with Iran. We have instead seen Iran threaten our interests and take very destabilizing and illegal and aggressive and even criminal activity against its neighbors. It's gotten worse from Yemen to Iraq to Syria and elsewhere. Camp Liberty residents, as, as has been said, are now safe in Europe, although the Iranians are probably still chasing them, and we need to be extremely vigilant and stand with our, our dear friends in Albania. The resistance group, the Mujahideen Ikalk and the National Council of Resistance of Iran, is now recognized to stand for everything that Senator Lieberman just told you, the 10-point plan, than any of these allegations that tried to portray their armed resistance over a number of years as something other than resistance against tyranny. Courts from France to the EU to the, Europe, to the UK to the United States have all challenged that, that characterization, and the terrorism listings have all disappeared for years now. And as I had the privilege of telling 3,000 MEK members in Albania when I spoke to them last fall, this continues the tradition that started this movement over 50 years ago. Three university students, intellectuals, who were looking at changes in the world as colonial regimes collapsed, as, as nationalism rose up in Cuba and Algeria, Vietnam. They thought that Iran was ripe to basically push the Shah out who was uh, very much in the pocket of the West, as you know. And so these students felt that Iran deserved to have its own voice and chart its own destiny. And they read books. They were extremely literate. They were very... Uh, Masood Rajavi himself was, gave lectures that thousands of students attended after he got out of jail after the fall of the Shah. So let's remember who these people really are. They're some of the smartest and most capable people Iran has ever produced in the modern age. And now you can read their books. You can read a great essay by Mrs. Rajavi about the true meaning of Islam, drawing on the life of Muhammad, on the Quran, showing that it is not a violent religion and that these extremist fundamentalists, both in Tehran and in ISIS, are violating Islam. She's the one who's made the case better than any that I've seen. 
You've seen books about the presence in Syria, 18 bases, up to 70,000 people on this payroll. Now you know where the money from the JCPOA is going to, to fund a defensive action to keep the Arab Spring from sweeping further to the east where it would enter Persia. Now you've seen a new book about the economy of Iran. And I've, I was reading it last night and it dawned on me that not only are the people of Iran, 78 million people, denied political rights, but now they're denied an ability to move forward economically. They're ab absolutely having their property seized, their ability to, to, to make a profit and to grow and to, to live a prosperous life is being denied to them by the Supreme Leaders Foundations and the IRGC. So this is really a situation ripe for change. And so, war crimes. You can go person by person from the Supreme Leader down the line, some of the most senior members of the regime, and we have court documents that place them in the room authorizing major terrorist operations. Yet there has been no accountability. We spent a lot of years when I was in government talking about the International Criminal Court and no, uh, there's, there, there has to be accountability for war crimes. We can talk about Bashar al-Assad and how the Arab League has, has urged that he be sent to face charges for crimes against humanity. You could put quite a dossier together on the, on, the, on the top members of this regime over 38 years and the blood on their hands. And why don't we do that? We have 17 intelligence agencies. Congress can certainly uh, whistle up a, a comprehensive report, unclassified. I think that things are changing very quickly. I think that our brave words in the past about, about celebrating a free Iran in, in, a, in a free Tehran um, are becoming a little bit more realistic now. I think that this 20 degree freezing weather is going to turn into a beautiful spring here in Washington very soon. And if I'm right, we may just see a Persian spring very soon in Iran. Thank you.